What's the smartest thing you've ever seen someone do during a D&D campaign? Part 1. Pretty much everybody at least intuitively understands that bards are great in urban environments, even if some players are kind of at a loss for exactly how to express that during gameplay. Some people are more natural fits for that kind of character class than others. I hadn't really considered how amazing a well played cleric could be in that same role until one of my players showed me. In fact, I was so impressed that I used that character as a template for Father Patricolo McKenney, who was a second tier character in the Candlebar novels I wrote, a step down from the main characters who served in a strong supporting role. The party rolled into a town they'd never been to before. Cleric talks to the gate guard. I think it started when I mentioned that he seemed fidgety and distracted as he waved them through the gates. Full stop. Deep conversation. The guard was impatient at first and not all that willing to talk about it, and as the DM, this was a cardboard cutout character I had minimal notes on, so was making all this up on the fly. I invented that he had a sick child at home and was anxious to get off duty so he could go check in. Cleric asked to speak with the captain of the watch. Paid to get the guard off duty early. Party followed him home and the cleric healed his kid. Instant friend in the watch. From his new friend, learned all the power players in town and a fair bit about their motivations. Went to the church and asked if they'd object to him ministering to the sick. Before they could even think to raise any objection, he offered to pay a generous tithe to the church. Instant respect from the clergy. Went to the inn and rented several rooms. Asked if the proprietor minded if he spent some time ministering to the sick and infirm. Innkeeper balked at that in the tavern, but was willing to rent out some stable space for that purpose. Sold. In about 10 minutes of game time, the cleric had set himself up in the stable with a long line of eager peasants needing his care, made several powerful friends in town and gave the rest of the party cover to move about freely. After that, he contented himself with the off-screen work of tending to the sick while the rest of the party did their thing in town, knowing that if they got in trouble, he'd be easy to find. Simply. Superb. Had it gone on much longer, I would have started to suspect that he was trying to steal the spotlight, but, he wasn't. He did the minimum necessary to set the conditions in town to massively favor the party, and then he was happy to fade into the background and let everybody else shine. I was beyond impressed. I was the DM. I sit in the middle of the party for intense scenes. I don't like to stay behind the DM screen as it imparts a distance. The party thief was in the big baddies quarters in the palace looking for evidence of a wrongdoing. He messes up the move silently checks and the boss gets in his face in a second. I am thinking it is probably a PK since the thief has no chance against the boss on his own. Who the hell are you? The boss roars. I am a servant I came by the servant entrance over there the player says and in real life physically points behind me. I turned back for a second by reflex. When I turned back he had a, and sharpened and really harmless, fruit knife touching my big belly. Player had a grin from ear to ear. No bluff rolls, no attack rolls. Automatic success. I had to rule him knifing the boss in the belly for a backstab, sneak attack or crit these days. He killed the boss on the spot. Bastard. I don't know about smart. But I've definitely seen people who role played their characters so well that the DM would forget to make certain roles. For example, a player creates a really convincing line character and it's several minutes later before the DM remembers that he never had the character make a bluff check. I would also say that I think players are quite smart when they view the party's actions with a wide angle lens and act accordingly. I was playing in one game where we were adventuring out of a little mountain village that was a bit conspicuously untouched by monster raids. We were still first level, but had come back with a fair bit of treasure and when we got back to the inn everyone went their separate ways and started working on separate projects like identifying magical items, looking at a map we'd found, etc. Everyone was pretty excited to do these things, except for one PC who found a comfy chair in the corner so that he could see the doorway to the inn. He bought an ale and only pretended to drink it. Sure enough, before anyone had finished their side projects, an agent of the baddies walked in the door because the bad guys actually ran the village. The guy by the fire fought and captured the enemy agent right before the eyes of the terrified villagers. We got a lot of information out of him, once the other PCs realized what had happened. I would actually say that this sort of thing happened a fair amount. 
players would all get excited about the interesting thing going on and forget to cover their backs. Having one player who remembers to hang back and protect against the obvious attack from behind can often be the difference between a medium difficulty fight and a tough surprise fight that might fell a PC or henchman. Distracting guards was also a smart trick that I've seen people do. I picked it up after watching another player do it. Sometimes the combat mechanics in D&D are so prevalent that one thinks that hacking one's way through a group of guards is the only option. Not so. We were trying to get into a restricted building in town in one game, and one player just decided he would very clearly mug a lady right in front of the guards. Naturally, the guards pursued him. Bingo. This was plenty of time for the rest of us to sneak in. This works great if you've got a magical item to increase speed or mobility. Lastly, I would say that I've always thought it was really clever when players could get a lot of mileage out of seemingly non-powerful magical items. I remember a character who had a ring of feather falling in a game. It seems like an innocuous enough item that just protects you from falling damage, but after a little while, that PC was using it all the freaking time, jumping out of windows or off cliffs. He more than once surprised enemies by coming out of nowhere right in their midst. Most players tend to view magical items as just the sum of their stats, with the aforementioned ring meaning takes no damage from falling. An inventive player will learn to use magical items in creative ways and adapt their tactics around that ability. My favorite moment of a player getting creative with magical item tactics was when our group was crossing a bridge in a haunted castle. Turns out, there were magical ballistae on both sides pummeling us with force bolts. My character got knocked unconscious, and a very creative player grabbed my character's body and jumped off the bridge. He pulled out a carpet of flying as he did so. This player was creative enough to see that something bad, falling into the gorge below, was actually good if it got an unconscious character to safety. The DM gets big points for intelligence too because he immediately had that character make a difficult dex check which he promptly failed, accidentally dropping the carpet. Of course, the player remembered another item he could use to save both himself, and me, his still unconscious comrade, from plummeting to certain death. The sheer unexpectedness of it was brilliant though, as was my unwitting participation in the escapade. Even if it hadn't worked, I still would have been proud to have to roll up a new character based on such a great move. The players entered the ruined castle. They had dispatched the outer lookouts easily. The rat in the sewer did little to slow them down. As they climbed the stair they saw a small room with a table, a chai and a lantern hanging from the wall. On the chair was sitting a guard. She was dozing off, and didn't hear the players. The rogue cut her throat and muffled her screams as she drowned in her own blood. They proceeded through a corridor with no ceiling but with high 15 foot walls. Then perhaps recklessly they opened the first door they found. And in front of them was the main room of the castle. And in there, all of the members of the organization they came to retrieve the artifact from. As the harpers looked at the blood and grime stained intruders startled, the fighter closed the door and barricaded it. What do we do said the wizard. They will kill us all there must have been more than 15 of them in there. I sat self satisfied as they started to panic. They brazenly decided to open a random door without checking it. I didn't need to fudge or change anything. They opted to attack in the middle of the day, so all of the harper operatives were there. They would need to retreat, I thought, or if they stay, a swift death is the only thing that will await them. What did you say was in the previous room? Asked the fighter. A table and a chair I said. Oh and a lantern. And how wide is the corridor? 5 feet with 15 foot walls. Aha says the fighter. We will put the table in the middle. Me and the rogue will go in front for the melee and the wizard and the ranger will stay back and make ranged attacks. But why I ask? Well the table gives us half cover, three quarters if we crouch, and they will not be able to rush us in the corridor. Well as you can imagine, it was a bloodbath. The harpers, overzealous due to their numerical advantage tried to rush them. The players absolutely massacred them. The AC advantages from cover combined with the fact that their formation allowed them to use all of the members of their team efficiently, the rogue was small size so he could stay in the space of the fighter easily, gave them such an advantage over their enemies, that they decimated half of them before they decided to retreat. That table made all the difference. But that's what you get to enjoy when your players understand what an RPG is. True role players understand that there is no set dressing. 
The environment exists to serve the players or hinder them, but it is always malleable and influential, never just the background. This particular game was a standard dungeon crawl adventure which run at a convention. The GM was a bit of a local celebrity with a reputation for running really exciting adventures, so a lot of people signed up for his game expecting something quite special. This particular GM allowed established characters, for example ones which had been played in his games before, to be used by players, but anyone new to him, for example, players like me, had to roll up a random first level character. This meant that our group of a dozen players was composed about half of fairly butch 9 12th level characters and half brand new first level characters. Problem was, this GM's dungeon was pretty much geared to the higher level characters being played by his buddies. As the game wore on it became evident that all us noobs were basically relegated to the role of porters, it was our job to carry the impressive number of bags chests of loot that the higher level players were hoovering up in what was obviously a Monty Hall style dungeon. In fact, things were so bad that none of us noobs were even allowed to fight because the experienced players didn't want to risk any of us kill stealing their XP. If you were one of the noobs this quickly became one of the most boring RPG sessions you'd ever played in. But then, in the midst of what was the largest toughest battle the party had been involved in so far, one of my fellow noob players came up with a brilliant idea. While the high level players were all caught up in a life or death struggle with whatever boss monster they were fighting, can't recall the details, this session was played about 30 years ago, we noobs would collectively just take off running in the direction we'd come, carrying all that loot with us. So we handed the GM a note saying we were all sneaking off, back around the corner and then head for the dungeon entrance as fast as we could run. The GM required us to make stealth rolls. Because all the high level types were all distracted, focused on their battle, we were able to get away without any of them noticing. It took them probably another 4 to 5 melee rounds to kill the enemy creature, but by that point we were gone. Unfortunately, the porter party noob group never made it out of the dungeon. We were all killed in a random encounter with a pack of fire breathing hellhounds. I say random because one of our group noticed that the GM was deliberately fudging our encounter rolls. Seems he didn't want his friends to be upset that he'd let us all get away with their loot. But we didn't care since, for us noobs, our characters were all essentially throwaway characters anyway. What made this so memorable was that we'd stuck it to the more experienced players who'd been treating us so badly, and even though they were able to follow our tracks and reclaim much of their treasure, a lot of it, in particular some very powerful magical spell books, was burned and destroyed in our fight with the fire-breathing hellhounds. It was a good, even great, way to die. As an interesting epilogue to this tale, this incident apparently became somewhat legendary in this particular GM's circle of friends becoming known as the Great Porter's Rebellion. Thereafter, whenever this group was playing with minor level players they always kept one of their number detailed to stay out of the main combat and remain with and watch over the noobs to prevent a repeat of the incident. Seems it never occurred to them to simply let the noobs join in the fun so they wouldn't feel like a bunch of disgruntled minimum wage service clerks. Hiya, before I finish, if you liked the video, please hit the subscribe button. Also we have a discord and the link is in the description. Plenty of D&D chat. And more importantly thanks for watching.